Hi. Um, so today I learned about something really cool. Uh, really caught my eye. I was watching a YouTube video and there was an ad, and it was for something called Cinemagraphs. And I like, hmm, I'm never heard of that. What is it? So I ended up watching the ad, and of course it was for a product that makes Cinemagraphs. Um, and I was watching a product, and um, Cinemagraphs are pretty cool. They're really um, captivating. They kind of have to stare at them and see what what's going on here. And what it is is it's taking a still image. So you got a frame, you know, you got your still image, and part of the actual image itself is actually moving. Um, so most of it is a static. It looks like a still image, but then there's animation added to it. Um, it's kind of natural animation too, like wind blowing or a car moving or somebody moving or something like that. Um, and it's really interesting. Um, just looking, it's kind of a, a neat little animation thing. It's not like a GIF. It's not like that um, the thing that the iPhone is doing with an animation picture. It's, it's different from that. Um, and the reason I find it really interesting is because I've been recently doing the social media for my job, um, and I'm trying to get views up and things like that. And I found out, hey, this is this might be worth a shot to try and capture some cool shots and then kind of add the animation to it and might make it a cinemagraph with a logo and whatnot and, um, and the stamp and stuff of, of my job. So I thought it was pretty, co pretty cool to get into. So of course I jump on YouTube and Yahoo and trying to figure out how to make it and of course the ad was like, oh buy our product and it's just specialized to make it. Well the product costs a lot of money and it's very specialized, it only does cinemagraphs. Uh, makes it very easy to make a cinemagraph but that's all it does. So I figured, oh there's got to be a way to do it. Um, at home, I use a program called Filmora. Filmora is a very nice, simple program. It uh, costs a little bit of money to make, and I figured, oh, there's got to be a way to do it with that, because other people are doing it with Photoshop and Adobe Premiere um, and other you know, name brand um, video editing software. So I figured Filmora should be able to do it. It can, add, it can do layers and things like that. Nobody made a tutorial on how to do cinemagraphs for Filmora, and that's why I'm doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the video, um, the actual video itself um, that I just created. I just figured out how to do it. It took me probably about half an hour, um, but that's because I've been using Filmora and I've done other similar um, type objects. So it took me a little bit of a while. Um, so here's the finished product. Okay, so what I did here is I took, um, made a little staging area, and I had an empty glass and a beer. Um, and basically, if you notice through the shot, I covered the bottom of the glass with my hand so that you don't see uh, how much beer is in the actual cup, and that helps add to the illusion that the glass is just being filled endlessly so you don't see the actual level of the beer being filled up. Uh, the very important part is that you're on a tripod and that the camera actually stays still. Uh, I tried to raise the beer can uh, pretty high so you can see the water flow. And then as it got full, as you can see right now, um, I just went ahead and lowered it. And then this was going to be a second shot was the actual swirls in the glass. But you can't see it that well because the lighting wasn't perfect. This is uh, Guinness's Nitro. Um, it basically adds a really weird foam to the glass so it actually adds a really cool effect that's why I use that's why I use this beer for this video um, and that's really it so uh, what that's the actual video here I have Filmora open and I'm going to from my collection I'm going to add the actual video that I took so this is the same video you just watched I have it here in Filmora I'm going to add it to the timeline and then I'm going to go through the timeline and find a nice sweet spot where my hand's pretty steady. So right about here, my hand's pretty steady. You see I'm jerking it a little bit there, but right here it's kind of steady. So I'm just going to pick one spot there. Um, go back a little bit. So right here in my timer I have eight, right around eight seconds, exactly eight seconds. This is a pretty good spot 
where I can kind of loop it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the video back up with VLC and I'm going to squeeze it to size. I'm going to play it right to about eight seconds. Right around here is where, as you can see, I'm not moving my hand too much. Still a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm going to take, say, right there. So right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a snapshot. So now I have a snapshot of this frame, and this is going to be basically my still shot for the cinemagraph. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to go over to uh, my pictures, and what I'm going to do, here it is, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to open with paint.net. So here is the still image I want to use. And basically, as you saw in the cinemagraph, the only part of the picture that moves is the liquid itself going into the cup. So basically, the picture here is going to become the foreground uh, for the cinemagraph. And then the animation is going to be the second ground. So what I need to do is basically cut a hole in this picture so that the animation part uh, is visible in the finished product. So um, with uh, paint.net. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to select basically just the part that moves. Actually, that's not too, that's not good. There we go. Just the liquid part itself. Nothing else really. Go down. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, oops. I'm going to press Control and catch a little bit more of that liquid there. A little bit more. A little bit more. So basically, I'm just selecting where the animation is going to be here. So I'm just using the lasso tool, and that should do it. Okay. So that's where the animation is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and press Delete. I'm going to remove it. Now, the problem that I, that took me a while to figure out is that if I use this as a frame, it adds a white line right where I just deleted the part of the image for the animation to, um, to be visible. So what I just figured out is if I use the magic wand, I select that area, I go to the um, move selection, and basically just expand a little bit outside all the corners. So basically now I have something that will um, trying to select just the outside most of it. And what I found works is if I use a blur and I use the uh, Gaussian blur. I think I said that right. I'm going to use that. Just do it about two, send it to about three. Click OK. And go ahead and select out and then zoom in. And now I have this little blur right around it. And that's going to really help uh, merge the still image with the animation. So I'm just going to look down. This looks like there's a slight blur here. Right here, there's no blur. So what I do, I'll just select just that little bit there that doesn't have the blur. And uh, if you go through the process, the entire process, you'll see a white line. So if you see a white line, just memorize where it is. And then just go back to your background and just kind of um, blur that part out just a little bit where it goes to the transparent part. So this looks pretty good. Actually, right here is a little bit not blurred. Hit that up. Just gonna hit this up. Looks like it might be blurred, but I don't think it is. Go ahead and blur that out. Okay. And again, this just really helps with the transition between the foreground static image and the animation. All right, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead, save as F, go to Mason. And I'm going to call it beer background, um, I'm going to call this final. Okay, save it as the maximum resolution, of course, so it matches the um, actual video. 
Now, so right here is basically where I kind of want it to be. It's right around eight seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back about there and just cut and delete this foreground. And right around there. Go ahead and just cut that, delete that. So the cinema craft really only uses about a second to a half a second of animation, most of them, unless you're doing something complex. So you only need um, really about one or two seconds of, I guess, sweet spot or, or of movement or of animation. So again, like I said, I just created my foreground, my static image. So I'm going to go to my pictures. Actually, I'm going to go to where. Go ahead and drag in now that static image that I just created. So as you can see, it's black there, but that's okay. That's just the way um, Filmora kind of shows it. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag that down uh, to the second layer here, to the image layer, and it's going to go on top. Uh, I can go ahead and just keep that at like four seconds or something like that. I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit so I can... So now what I want to do is I want to zoom, or I want to resume, and as you can see, I'm kind of looking at the image itself, uh, kind of moving with the image there. So now this is what it'll look like without the image, without the animation in the background. As you can see, it's just black. If I move the cursor over, there's the liquid flowing. So um, kind of hard to tell, but right about here, is where everything kind of lines up. So I'm going to delete that foreground. And yeah, actually the whole animation that I have here kind of works with it, which is kind of nice. Kind of adds a nice long, yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but for the tutorial, I think you'll kind of get it. So I'll just end it right there because I think it starts to move. All right, so now I have this little snippet. And if I play it, it just kind of plays like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy, paste it an odd amount of times. Now, I mean odd as in uh, three, five, seven, that type of odd. So, And I'll explain why. So this first um, portion here is going to be played in forward, and then I'm going to play it in reverse. So this way, the motion looks like it's very smooth. So it looks like it's bobbing up and down, um, and it just adds it very smooth. So here, I'll show you if I play it with just straight, see it kind of adds like a flicker. I don't know if you can see that, but it adds a little bit of a flicker. So what I want to do is every other section, I want to go to edit and play the clip in reverse. So this one's forward, this one is going to be in reverse. Play clip in reverse. This one's going to be forward. This one, again, will be played in reverse. And this way, when it loops, this one's in reverse. It goes back to the first one, which is in forward mode. So it's forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, loop back to forward. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten this to there. Now, um, with Filmora, it's a little, like I said, it's not a great program. It's a little weak. So it's got to kind of render it, but it's, it doesn't really play it. But you can see how it just kind of plays back and forth. And it adds a smooth motion in the finished product. So that's pretty much it um, as far as editing of course you can go back smooth out your foreground um, your static image uh, recrop it or you can select a slightly different animation group to kind of match where your uh, movement is going to be um, usually it's going to be pretty small uh, my the one that you saw is a little bit smaller than this uh, this one's a little big um, it's a lot of playing around with, it's a lot of kind of calculations, but I'm doing this kind of quickly just to get the idea. So now I'm going to go ahead and create the video. With Filmora, the, you have to really do the same resolution that the video was shot in. Um, this video was shot in 1920 by 1080. If you don't do it for some reason, the foreground image becomes a little skewed, and then the... Um, the pictures just don't line up right. So I found out if you just kind of film, if you kind of export it as the same resolution, it, it really works out great. And then you can just take that large resolution, put it back in, and then kind of downgrade it. So the original film was shot in 1920 by 1080. I'm going to click OK. 
and I'm going to go ahead and export. All right, and I'm just going to fast forward this. Okay, we're back. So the video finished. I'm going to go ahead and do find target and go ahead and open up the video I made. All right, so it kind of got, it wasn't as good as the first one, but you kind of see the idea here that the, um, the static image is on top and that the animation is flowing underneath it. Um, as you can see, because I used a longer shot, the fluid's moving a little bit more, but if you look further away, you don't really see it too much. Um, let me show you what the problem is. See that one? There we go. So this one, if you look at this one closely, you can kind of see... Oh, there we go. So we'll go ahead and try to zoom in there. But as you can see, there's that white line around it, and um, that's where the blur wasn't good. That's what's going to happen if you don't blur it properly. This one, as you can see, is a shorter clip. It's only about maybe half a second long. And it does not have the reverse between clips. So it kind of has that jerky motion where it's going back. As opposed to, say, the one that we just created. Or as you can see, it's just smooth all the way through, even though it's not lined up properly. But at least the animation itself is smooth. So um, that's it. Um, that's what I learned how to do today. Okay, so that's how you make a cinema graph. Um, not too complicated, but it does take a lot of tweaking, as you, as you saw, and as, as I keep saying it. You, know, you do have to play with the foreground image, the static image, kind of crop down where the animation is going to be, get the animation in a nice loop, um, you know, do back-to-back uh, clips where it's you know every other clip is in reverse so this way it just adds a nice smooth transition between those clips otherwise you get the jerkiness make sure you add the blur um, I don't think you have to add the blur with other programs it kind of does that for you or it just cuts a very finite at the actual pixel just merge but for whatever reason for more of course being a not a super high-end product it just does that which you know is fine there's a workaround and that's what took me a while to figure out how to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you kind of learned something new, um, even if you don't do it. But if you are using Filmora, please go ahead and use it. Give me a like. Um, I'm not going to say go ahead and subscribe. I'm not going to do a lot more of these videos. I might, but um, probably not. Um, took me a couple tries, but hopefully um, overall it's pretty simple to do. And I'm probably going to do a couple more of them so I get comfortable and then I'm going to go ahead and maybe make something for my job um, just to kind of get more views on social media. Um, hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching.